Have you ever wondered how they can pull off these massive staged media driven stunts and so few seem to notice what's really going on? Look at the Boston bombing or Sandy Hook. There are more inconsistencies than you can name, yet nothing contrary to the official narrative is allowed to be introduced into the news stream, unless of course it's derogatory of anyone challenging the party line. They'll usually give a token acknowledgement of the other side and then move on so people figure that was covered and accounted for. It's almost alchemical how they're able to utilise staged high impact news events, shove across their pre-planned solutions that need immediate unthinking and unsubstantiated action and then dissolve the emotionally driven issue with new distractions before there's time to even find out what really happened. It virtually doesn't matter what really happens anymore. It's the original shock value of the staged event, real or imaginary, and the complicit prostitutes that make the intended impression that matters. This is all. You have to hand it to them in their warfare techniques. How do you not reel at the thought of dozens of very young innocent children being massacred in a school? It's a horrific thought, but it's all about shock value. It's the same with 9-11. Hit the highest profile buildings in the world. Mix in some dramatic, long prepared backstory of turban brown people in caves attacking American soil and run and rerun these images and the resultant horror, screams, death and tragedy and you've got yourself an, an emotional tidal wave to ride straight into the Middle East and beyond and the beginning of an Orwellian crackdown on the supposed targeted populace the likes of which the world has never seen. Talk about absurd. And as the physically accosted public is still reeling from the impact, before they know it, Laws are passing and wars are being waged. The Gulf of Tonkin incident that started the Vietnam conflagration never happened, we know. And that has been proven by FOIA documents. Does that stick in anyone's mind? The Martin Luther King assassination was proven in public court to have been carried out by the CIA. And who remembers that? Or even knows it? All after we are all taken to the cleaners with the mainstream story of another stage mass trauma mimicking the JFK assassination scenario. Unless these profound truths are highlighted instead of ignored, skirted and buried, the sleeping masses figure there must not be anything to worry about. That's our sad state of affairs, plain and simple, and it's ongoing. Terrorists strike barracks, embassies and ships. Homegrown militants blow up Oklahoma City building. Cavemen from Afghanistan permeate the world's most sophisticated defence system ever. Lone nuts shoot up bases, theatres and schools. The list is almost endless. Attention deficit is one thing, but we're talking mass psychosis here. Just look how many draconian laws and executive orders have been passed while the tricksters have everyone looking the other way. The emblematic freedom-ending coup de grace was recently exemplified by this gratuitous Monsanto Protection Act getting passed. While the country is told the economy is recovering and the media piddles over issues like the Grammys and the coming frozen Super Bowl. And all this is rubber stamped by a propped up drone who came into office promising the exact opposite of everything he's done, including escalating the fascist imperialist march into the Middle East and Africa, with more to come. It will not stop until Iran is eviscerated. Shock and awe comes home to roost. You have to wonder how this can tra transpire in a world soaked in information transfer and, and availability. Perhaps that in itself is one of the factors, where the populace assumes the truth will come out all by itself in such a connected world. Surely they couldn't hide these things with so much media technology in place. I've heard it said to me many a time. They will tell us. And these are the same people that believe there is no they orchestrating the direction of society. I know. What planet are we on again? The truth is still available if anyone takes the time to look. In fact, more than any other time in history, it's just 
been so well marginalised as conspiracy talk or anti-whatever speech, they won't even turn their heads to look for it due to the conditioning raining down on their eyes, bodies and minds. Good news, once anyone's eyes are open, they can perceive the big picture and the extent of this complete charade being perpetrated. If they have the courage to buck the hypnotised tide, now you know why the zombie idea is pushed, for programmed acceptance. Zombification is fun for one and all. The Stockholm Syndrome is famous for a reason. It explains a frightening aspect of weak and unaware human behaviour. The term Stockholm Syndrome was coined in the early 70s to describe the puzzling reactions of four bank employees to their captor. On August 23, 1973, three women and one man were taken hostage in one of the largest banks in Stockholm. They were held for six days by two ex-convicts who threatened their lives but also showed them kindness. To the world's surprise, all of the hostages strongly resisted the government's efforts to rescue them and were quite eager to defend their captors. Indeed, several months after the hostages were saved by the police, they still had warm feelings for the men who threatened their lives. Two of the women even eventually got engaged to the captors. The Stockholm incident compelled journalists and, so and social scientists to research whether the emotional bonding between captors and captives was a freak incident or a common occurrence in oppressive situations. They discovered that it's such a common phenomenon that it deserves a name. Thus the label Stockholm Syndrome was born. It has happened to concentration camp prisoners, cult members, civilians in Chinese communist prisons, pimp procured prostitutes, incest victims, physically and or emotionally abused children, battered women, prisoners of war, victims of hijackings, and of course, hostages. Stockholm Syndrome is a survival mechanism. The men and women who get it are not lunatics. They are fighting for their lives. They deserve compassion, not ridicule. Can you see the state dependency that's been cultivated and reinforced? This is centuries old, but now perfected in the information age. This is how they operate. It's deliberate social engineering by the so-called elites of what they call the mass herd, the expendables, human resources. We apparently must be herded, and it's best done when we're sedated. Hence the drugging of our food, air and water supplies. Hitler put fluoride in the water in the concentration camps. This was to dumb down his captives, stifle their will to resist and make them compliant. It had the added bonus of making them infertile. Do you think he cared about cavities? So why is it so hard for people to wake up out of this imposed hypnotic state and see some of these obvious lies, cover-ups and mass manipulations? One reason is the fluoride that has been injected in the water since the 1940s after finding how effective it was at placating prisoners before and during World War II. Yes, fa fascist technology was passed on to other fascist states Besides seriously hindering our mental and spiritual capabilities by drinking it, it's now in the soil and oceans, further polluting our environment and food supply. Fluoride has been found in chemtrail fallout to further exacerbate this hor horrific poisoning. Then there are the chemtrails themselves. Loaded with a cocktail of metallic and otherwise toxins, these have a cumulative effect on our nervous, autoimmune, and endocrine systems that are drastically altering our physical and more importantly mental states, reducing short and long term memory while making us more sensitive and thus susceptible to electromagnetic influences as well. The combination, an easily manipulated populace growing more so by the hour. The intention exactly what they're getting full sway over a very large mass of humanity for their own designs and programs. Hence, we must do our best to prevent what we can, detoxify and become fully aware of this program. Our ingestion of aluminium and barium is said to even make us visible by space radar. This is very serious stuff. Backing it up a bit, just assuming we're getting a low dose of these toxic heavy metals being found in our air, water, food and food, what does that make us susceptible to besides disease? 
EMF pollution has proliferated on our planet almost faster than they can track. Wi-Fi, cell phones, cell towers, green towers, half-type facilities, radio bands of all sorts. These are nasty onto themselves. But coupled with the metalized human body, we've got problems. We've become a bionic receiving station for all kinds of impulses and EMF influences. A radio frequency engineer once told me, as we stood in the car park, that if we could see the invisible electromagnetic waves surrounding us, the air would look the consistency of pea soup. We'd be lucky to be able to see our toes. I asked him whether he carried a cell phone. He responded thoughtfully, Do tobacco executives smoke? Of course not. Do electronics engineers carry cell phones? They know better. Few people are listening to the real authority to which they have instant access, their own body. Some of the most commonly experienced effects of EMFs like depression, brain fog, attention deficit disorder, chronic fatigue, autism, sleeplessness, anxiety and Alzheimer's increase coffee shop and drug corporation profits as people look for relief. But a drug dependent fix is different than vigorous health, especially for the planet. I don't know how advanced this sick technology is, it's fully, but I've read plenty of very real documentation stating what the capability of such weaponry is. We can see it used militarily, even on police wagons where their low frequency sound blasters can disperse a crowd in seconds. And that's obviously just the tip of the iceberg. Research Project Bluebeam and related info for some exotic applications, but there's plenty out there on these phenomena. The point is to be aware. And just to conclude, we're being tricked, bamboozled, lied to, deceived, misled, falsely accused, drugged, threatened and cajoled. Never mind murdered. They are not our friends by any stretch of the imagination, whomever or whatever they truly are. The best description of what we're up against is a robotic parasitic force an otherworldly and unfeeling, call it satanic or demonically inspired invasion of our planet that's been in the offing for a long, long time. And only now are we seeing its true ugly mechanical face. Nothing could be this concerted, coordinated, negatively spiritually inspired, so wicked against the cause and purpose of loving mankind than a force from the underworld, a force of evil as we would perceive it. To them it may be conquering, to us it is anti-life, anti-truth, anti-source, anti-creator, wherever it's coming from. Parasites have long been at war with the living, sucking them dry for the energy they need but cannot create on their own. It's time to confront and expel them at every level of our existence, including the minions that have yielded to them. We are conscious awareness, the ultimate force of the universe. Decision day is today. Resist, respond, recapture our planet. We're under attack and need to fight back. Our weapons are spiritual. Be conscious, aware, informing and on your toes. This is one heavy duty time and in itself a call to arms. Ours is so ours is to simply respond responsibly and consciously.